I want to read to y'all from William Lutz's Double Speak. I'm going to read a small passage. He says that in his famous and now our George Orwell in language, in his famous and now classic essay, Politics and the English Language, which was published in 1946, George Orwell wrote that the great enemy of clear language is insincerity, when there is a gap between one's real and one's declared aims. One turns, as it were, instinctively to long words and exhausted idioms like a cuttlefish squirting out ink. For Orwell, language was an instrument for expressing and not for concealing or preventing thought. That that sparks the idea of the trivium and the quadrivium. And when it talked up there about the insincerity, it reminded me of unholiness explained in John Dean Burgeon's Unholy Hands on the Bible. So just letting you know what it kind of sparks in my mind. It says, in his most biting comment, he observed that in our time, political speech and writing are largely, sorry, I had to change grips, defense of the indefensible. Political language has to consist largely of euphemism, question begging, and sheer cloudy vagueness. Political language is designed to make lies sound truthful and murder respectable, to give appearance of solidity to pure wind. Orwell understood well the power of language as both a tool and a weapon. In the nightmare world of his novel 18, or 1984, Orwell depicted a society where language was one of the most important tools of the totalitarian state. Sounds like today, right? <laughs> Sounds like the world we live in. Newspeak, the official state language in the world of 1984, was designed not to extend but to diminish the range of human thought to make only correct thought possible, right? Like the thought police and all other modes of thought impossible. So you can't think. You can't think outside of like nationalism and the school and the church, right? It was, in short, a language designed to create a reality that the state wanted. Sorry, my hand is killing me because of the way I'm sitting. So i got to keep changing grips. So he says... Let me see. He says... Newspeak had another important function in Orwell's world of 1984. It provided the means of expression for doublethink, the mental process that allows you to hold two opposing ideas in your mind at the same time and believe in both of them. The classic example in Orwell's novel is the slogan, War is Peace. So that makes sense, because if you're killing people, that's not peace. If you're blowing up hospitals, you're not, <laughs> you're not um, believing in the sanctity of human life, right? So, lest you think double think is confined only to Orwell's novel, you need only recall the words of Secretary of State Alexander Haig when he testified before a Congressional Committee in 1982 that a continued weapons buildup by the United States is absolutely essential to our hopes for meaningful arms reduction. So build up the weapons and get rid of them at the same time, right? Or remember what Senator Orwin Hatch said in 1988, capital punishment is our society's recognition of the sanctity of human life. So killing them, but uh, that's the sanctity of human life when we kill them. At its worst, doublespeak like newspeak is language designed to limit, if not eliminate, thought. Like doublethink, doublespeak enables speaker and listener, writer and reader, to hold two opposing ideas in their minds at the same time and believe in both of them. At its least offensive, doublespeak is inflated language that tries to give importance, importance to the insignificant. So, I just want to